Patrick Ewing and the New York Knicks, the wait for the playoffs is finally over. The regular season was a successful one, 57 wins and a second straight Atlantic title. They endured injuries and adversity, yet somehow always managed to find the answer. Yes, Pat Riley's club is ready, but there is reason for apprehension. Their first round opponent has had their number this season. Kenny Anderson and Derek Coleman have led the Cross River rivals to four wins and five meetings, leaving the Nets confident. And Derek Coleman talking trash to anyone with an earshot. But the Knicks have no plans of backing down. Patrick Ewing feels the stronger team still resides at Madison Square Garden and that this is their time. The Knicks are now fully loaded because John Starks is back and ready to take the big shot. Tonight, round one of a heated rivalry gets underway. you live to the home of the New York Knicks and MSG's coverage of the 1994 NBA playoffs. Tonight, game one in this best of five that opens the NBA second season between the New Jersey Nets and the New York Knicks. 19,763 once again, but these tickets worth more, so much more. Hi, everybody. I'm Al Trout. We're getting from Marv Albert, who's on another assignment for the NBA playoffs on NBC. I'm working with John Andres, of course. And, John, with all the great feeling and the matchups and the regular season and what went on, I think one of the most memorable things, regardless of how this game goes tonight, is going to be finally the return of John Starks to the Knicks. Yes, you know the Knicks are welcoming John back. And it's not just for his scoring, but it's all his all-around personality, Al, at both ends of the basketball court. John, as Nick fans know, has been out for a number of games. And in fact, he's only played 59 games this season for the Knicks. And the Knicks are very happy to have him back tonight. He's raring to go. In those 59 games, he's averaged 19 points a game. His shooting percentage isn't that high, but his all-around game has been balanced out with almost six assists a game. He hasn't played since March 9th. So the Knicks welcome him back. And not only his scoring out, but his defensive energies will be very important to the Knicks' successes, and I'm sure we'll see him tonight. Now the Knicks finish number two, the Nets number seven, but from the midpoint of January, these teams had very similar records. And some people say the regular season doesn't count for much, but if you're the Nets, it counted for a lot of confidence, and it proved time and time again that Derek Coleman and Kenny Anderson can drive the Knicks nuts. Well, these two All-Stars, and they were All-Stars this year, performed at that level in those four victories against the Knicks this season. Derek Coleman a very big man with a lot of mobility if you leave him alone he can beat the big people as he did the Knicks were very slow on that sequence picking him up on that delayed pick and roll Kenny Anderson beat three Knicks all by himself with a spectacular move showing you why he's the NBA's leading point guard scorer against the Knicks this year Anderson 19 points over eight assists a game Coleman 23 plus points a game and over 13 rebounds in both those games in all those games rather both those players exceeded their season averages so they rose against the Knicks. Well the Knicks have their black sneakers on a lot of shaved heads on the floor both of these great coaches have been planning and Patrick Ewing begins what he thinks will be a long march. He says this is our time. We'll be back live for the beginning of game one in this best of five to Madison Square Garden. These are the NBA playoffs on MSG. New York Knicks basketball is brought to you by Budweiser fresh pure natural proud to be your bud by nobody beats the whiz for state of the art home electronics computers cameras music movies and more nobody beats the whiz by Delta Airlines official airline of Madison Square Garden and by Citibank the city never sleeps. Since they entered the NBA in the late 70s, the New Jersey Nets have looked with envy across the river at what the Garden has and what the Knicks have. They own this town, and this is their first chance to take something big, very big away from the Knicks. 
Game one tonight, Nets and Knicks. Our coverage begins now with the introduction of the lineups with Mike Walshevsky. At guard, at 6'3 from DePaul, number 21, Kevin Edwards. At forward, at 6'11 from Louisiana Tech, number 42, P.J. Brown. At forward, at 6'10 from Syracuse, number 44, Derek Coleman. At center at seven feet from Creighton, double zero, Benoit Benjamin. Let's go, let's go, let's go, right? let's go. The trainer is Ted Arsonico, assistant coaches Brendan Soar, Paul Silas, and Rick Carlisle, and the head coach, Chuck Daly. from North Carolina, number 44, Rupert Davis. And forward at 6'8 from St. Louis, number 4, Anthony Bonner. And forward at 6'9 from Virginia Union, number 34, co-captain Charles Oakley. And at center at 7 feet from Georgetown, Number 33, co-captain Patrick Drew. Bad trainer is Mike Saunders. The assistant trainer, Tim Walsh. Assistant coaches, Dick Carter and Trent Van Gundy. And the head coach of the Knicks, Pat Riley. Well, every season under Pat Riley and Dave Check, it's a little something different for the Knicks in their playoff introductions and from the looks of things around the fans loved it and it has done what it was intended to do get them into the game from the very beginning very very exciting event here al the fans are wild the knicks enjoyed a sellout in every game this season tonight it seems like there are even more people here and the knicks have a very big job on their hands against this team to beat them four out of five this season and it's got to start and end with defense. For the Nets, we're looking at their main man, Derek Coleman. Derek and Kenny Anderson will be the targets, you know, of the Knicks defense. Charles Oakley will have the tough job from the beginning. Anthony Bonner probably can't wait to get involved in helping out. And you know Anthony Mason is just dying to get back after his three-game suspension. And However he feels, double that for John Starks. But for now, it's Kenny Anderson in the backcourt with Kevin Edwards, Benoit Benjamin, P.J. Brown, and Derek Coleman. Now let's check the haircuts. Mason is shaven except for a little New York <laughs> state of art on the side of his head. Oakley just about down to the skin. Bonner two, Derek Harper, and Hubert Brown. He's made a commitment. Jake O'Donnell, Bill Oaks, Ed Middleton, and we're underway with a Hubert Davis save. Game one of this best of five. Harper guarded by Anderson. Great matchup. Bonner picked up by P.J. Brown. 
Well, the Nets say they're going to be all over Patrick Ewing. Let's see what they do when he touches the ball for the first time. And he's outside. Benjamin comes out. No one else. Ewing is off, and it's a big Coleman rebound. Benjamin has been told to go out and get Ewing. Don't let him shoot open jump shots. Fans into it early with the legendary chant of defense here at the Garden. Benjamin, the ball slapped away. Anderson there to save it. He wheels away from the double team and then lets it go as the 24-second clock expires. Oakley, way off. Nick's 0 for 2 and a whistle. It'll be against the Nets. C.J. Brown is called for the loose ball foul, and Anthony Bonner will inbound. First foul in the game. Very gentle persuasion by Charles Oakley in the direction of official Jake O'Donnell. Somewhere, if Kennard Winchester is watching, he's smiling. The Knicks with his black sneaker tradition continuing in the playoffs. Kevin Hubert Edwards. Davis caught up in the air traveling. Excuse me, Al. Kevin Edwards with a very fine defensive uh, move on Hubert Davis, denying him that shot attempt and ultimately the turnover. Derek Harper will need help, and he gets some from Patrick Ewing. Everybody in the league needs help on Kenny Anderson. Coleman right at Bonner. Brown. The overthrow, and Anderson is there. Well, there's an example of the anxiousness on the part of the Knicks. Ewing putting a little too much on that pass attempt. The Knicks rolled through March, then struggled in early April, losing six of nine, and then ended it with a three-game winning streak. And the first hoop is scored by Kevin Edwards. Oakley, tough pass. Ewing rejected by Benjamin on the stuff attempt. Anderson for three. Almost an air ball. And Kenny hears it from the Garden crowd. In the course of the five games against the Knicks, the Nets had more blocked shots than the Knicks did. Example of their abilities was Benjamin's fine block on Ewing. Anderson guarding Harper in his first NBA playoff experience. Harper breaks free. And the Knicks are still 0-4 the first two and a half minutes. He was distracted by that hook in front of him, Benjamin. He, he was, you know, he was awaiting contact, which never took place, and that distracted the shot. Benjamin posts up on Ewing. Edwards uses him as a screen and breaks behind the Knicks defense to give the Nets a 4-0 lead. Very porous defense by the Knicks on that play. He went right around Patrick Ewing. Great use of that Benjamin screen by Edwards. Ewing throws one, two, three New Jersey Nets and the foul. Tell you what didn't help was Ewing started his move. Bonner drove toward Ewing and took his defensive man into Ewing's path as well. Ewing starts his move. Bonner comes in the way, and that drew Brown over to deflect Ewing. Fortunately, Ewing drew the foul. A discouraged Chuck Daly looks to the floor at the officials because it was the second foul on P.J. Brown, and Chris Morris, bothered by injury for much of the season, makes his way into the game for New Jersey. Ewing goes up strong, and this time he's rejected by Coleman. Boy, that's a double team that didn't look like it was going to exist, and then suddenly it was there on Patrick. Got to credit Coleman also, not only for getting there, but for going at Ewing aggressively and getting that ball away. Nick still haven't hit a shot. Harper uses the Ewing screen. Davis off on the three. Morris up high, but so is Oakley. The Knicks' success will be measured by how quickly they can move the ball to open people. Ewing. The Knicks are now 0 for 6. I'm sure this is not the way they envisioned coming back from Charleston, South Carolina and beginning this game one. But the Nets have not exactly been hitting everything either. 4-0 New Jersey. 8 on the 24-second clock. Morris for Coleman with 5. Three. Morris with three. Big rebound by Benjamin. He is off. Morris flies through the crowd. And it will be a loose ball foul favoring the Knicks. Chris Morris called. 
Chris Morris averaging six points, shooting only 20% from the floor, two of 14 beyond the three-point line, and only four rebounds a game. He played in only 50 of the 82 for them this year, and Patrick Ewing opens things up with that soft jump shot. So the Knicks are on the board. Correction at the other end, not a foul on Morris. Offensive goaltending on Morris. So it's 4-2 New Jersey. Coleman yet to score wild shot he follows it and he traveled coming down with it now the Knicks have got to respect boxing out tonight this is a very big team Chuck Daly has Harper penetrates the Nets collapsed on the free throw line Ewing a running one hander it's finally New Jersey's ball. A very difficult shot to make on a regular basis. There's no backboard called into play, and it's not a soft shot. Coleman's first points, and it's 6-2 Nets. Patrick Ewing, one for five here in the opening minutes. Davis, beautiful touch. Ruby continues to develop his drive better and better. And you know, Al, depending on how he plays will determine how quickly we will see John Starks. Quick five minutes here at the Garden. Kenny Anderson still has not scored. Harper staying right with him. Five on the 24-second clock. And illegal defense is called against the Knicks. It's their first, only a warning, and a timeout here at MSG. And on MSG, we'll take a break. 6-4, New Jersey. Logo on the floor here at the Garden tells you it's that special time of me year. Seats two and seven and three and six going at it tonight in the NBA playoffs. Last night, Miami shocked Atlanta by five, and Byron Scott shocked the Magic with a three-pointer and two seconds left to give Miami and Indiana a one-nothing lead in these best-of-five series. Kenny Anderson and the Nets up by two over the Knicks. Kevin Edwards guarded by Hubert Davis. Spins to get free. Shooting for both teams very much off. Knicks two for nine, 22%. Nets three for nine, 33%. Now it appears the Nets are going to some one-on-one -on -one play by clearing out a side for Anderson and or Edwards as they just did. Oakley's 0 for two. Offensive rebound by Bonner. And he traveled. On the putback, Anthony Bonner traveled. Al, I'm a little surprised at the Knicks shooting. They are the mature team. They're the more experienced team by far in playoff experience and they're playing very tight. It would appear that way. Two for ten now. And they had the crowd in it at the very beginning, and now I think the crowd seems to echo your feeling. They're a bit befuddled by this. Of course, the Knicks in their series against the Nets this year have shot exceedingly poor from the field at a shade under 42% in the five games. Anderson going in on Harper, Ewing out high to guard Benjamin. Chris Morris fakes Oakley, goes around him, and he traveled. It's Travel City out there so far in the first quarter. The third traveling violation called on both teams, and three turnovers apiece. Crowd coming to the Knicks' rescue once again with some murmuring of support. Harper Ewing again as he approaches the hoop. He is hit and hit hard, and Ewing up and okay. Of course, one of the many things I think you want to keep an eye on as you analyze this series is how often does Patrick Ewing go to the free throw line? If he goes a lot, it's a great sign for the Knicks. Nice bounce pass to Ewing. Very easy for him to catch, and he's gotten from behind as he moves in for that field goal attempt. Kevin Edwards called for the first foul, and Patrick Ewing to take his first free throws. Patrick averaged eight uh, foul shot attempts in the five games. Derek Coleman, on the other hand, for the Nets, averaged 12 foul shot attempts while making 10 per game against the Knicks. Ewing finished the season shooting 77% from the free throw line. He's got them both. And game one is tied. Harper doing a nice job so far in Kenny Anderson, not allowing Kenny to get free. 
Anderson, a little off the mark, but Coleman corrals it. Oh, Tip inside is just missed by Kevin Edwards. Let's try to push it up the floor. And then Hubert Davis circles out. Hubert Davis better keep his eye on Edwards because he can really jump. Ewing, one on one against Benjamin. Harper for three. That's the veteran leadership that Derek Harper brings. That long shot should loosen up this team. That should spread around. First points in the game for Harper and their impact points, giving the Knicks a three point lead. It's a 7 0 Nick run. Edwards, wild double pump. Nick defense is coming to the occasion. Davis on the drive, the left hand. Hubert Davis with his second great looking left handed swoop across the lane. Well, it took the Knicks almost eight minutes, but it appears now that they've arrived. When you can't hit your shots, your defense can save you. Derek Coleman ends the 9-0 Nick run. Patrick Ewing, you know, does not want to get fouls in the first quarter. That happened in two of the five games, and it really affected the Knicks throughout those games, though, both losses. Ewing on the mismatch, guarded by Morris, who slaps the ball away. Nine seconds on the 24-second clock for the Knicks to make something happen. Fourth time. Daly and Riley have met in the NBA playoffs. Off a Nick leg, and it is net ball. Only the second time that the Nets and Knicks have met in the playoffs, but here they are as head coaches with playoff wins impressive winning percentages impressive four titles for Riley two for Chuck Daly and it's about to happen Benoit Benjamin hits it's about to happen John Starks is about to return for the Knicks and he's there with Charles Smith at midcourt Oakley Ray off on his fourth straight shot. Anderson with the ball, missing the playoffs last year because of his broken wrist. Played three games in the prior year. This is really his beginning, you might say, in playoff experience. Morris, as the 24-second clock expires, the Knicks have been forcing New Jersey down to the final seconds on that clock here in the first quarter. Ewing, great look for Oakley. Oakley's strength enabled him to get the great position, and Ewing saw him perfectly. First points for Oakley. Only Anthony Bonner hasn't scored for the Knicks starters. Kenny Anderson and P.J. Brown haven't scored at the New Jersey starters, but Morris is on the floor for Brown now. Good follow by Edwards, and he's fouled on the return. Another timeout on the floor here at the Garden. Two, 33 to go. Knicks by three. John Starks when we come back. A real winner knows how to party right. Please use good sense when you drink and know when to say when. A reminder from Budweiser. Matt Riley waiting till 2.33 remained in the first quarter to reinsert John Starks. Starks got the uh, final go-ahead at Charleston, South Carolina when he surprised many of his teammates by how aggressively and physically he returned to contact drills with the team. And maybe in a stroke of Pat Riley genius, he reintroduces John Starks to the Knicks out since March 9th. At the same time, he introduces Charles Smith to this playoff crowd. He knows that no matter what the crowd thinks, it's going to be cheer city for Starks. There he plays Anthony Bonner and Hubert Davis. A standing ovation, welcoming back John Starks. The script would say he runs around like crazy, takes a three the first time he gets the ball, and hits it. And we go on from there. <laughs> That's putting pressure on him, Al, but I'll tell you, 
He's got to think defense at this moment. Kevin Edwards is hurting the Knicks on the boards. Kevin Edwards misses the second free throw. Great save by Jason Williams, who's checked into the game for Chuck Daly. Derek Coleman guarded well by Charles Smith on the shot. Smith went the way of the bald head. And he tries to bring Chris Morris out high. Next post up Ewing draws a crowd. Smith is free. Hits it. A perfect way for Charles Smith to begin these playoffs. Nice sequence. Oakley to Ewing. Smith comes in off the cut, stops at the foul line. Very well done by the Knicks front line. Knicks by four. And now the crowd cheers because Anthony Mason's getting set to come back. Morris off on the three. Oakley and Smith combined for the rebound. Interesting note, Al. Ewing already has three assists. He had four in the five games this year against New Jersey. Harper tried the three, and it's Coleman. Anderson whips it up the floor. It gets past Chris Morris for John Starks. Wearing a light left knee brace, John Starks is guarded by Coleman and Kevin Edwards. He drives to the baseline, lets it go! John Starks is back! Well, if you're a Knicks fan, you got some chills on that shot. Final minute of the quarter. Tremendous energy here at the Garden. Smith rejects Coleman on the shot, but a foul. And a good foul. He sent that shot back. He gave Coleman some real pressure. Anthony Mason back into the Nick lineup after a three-game suspension absence. John Starks doesn't quite get the baseline. Good defense by Edwards, but John had another answer. And oh, did the fans love it. Eric Coleman to the free throw line. He's worked up a sweat, working hard. He's got three rebounds already, two of five from the floor, four points. He and Kenny Anderson combined to average in the five regular season games against the Knicks for over 40. And right now, Anderson hasn't scored, and he has four. Friendly bounce here at the Garden. In nine career playoff games, here are Derek's numbers. Derek last year in that five-game series against Cleveland was sensational. He carried the Nets, literally carried them to a five-game series and almost an upset. Didn't he come within two assists in one game of a quadruple double? Yes. 40 seconds in the first quarter. Starks and a change of shot in midair. Well played by Edwards. Coleman and Jason Williams get it up the floor in a hurry. Williams is off. Oakley tips it. There starts. Dribbles around Coleman. Mason. He bangs in on Jason Williams underneath. Oh, it couldn't be better for Starks and Mason to make their way back into the lineup. Welcome back, Anthony Mason. Knicks by six. They've held New Jersey to 13 first quarter points. Anderson deflected by Anthony. He's on the run. And it's kicked out of bounds. It will be New Jersey ball. Good transition by Edwards on Anthony, who looked like he had a layup when that began. 1.2 seconds to go. It's been a fun to watch first quarter for a lot of reasons. The early struggles, the return of Starks and Mason, the defense of both teams at the end of one. It is the Knicks 19 and the Nets 13. That didn't miss by much. New York Knicks basketball is brought to you in part by Foot Locker, the world's most complete athletic footwear store, where it all begins. By Toyota. I love what you do for me, Toyota. And by AT&T, the official telecommunications company of the New York Knicks and the NBA.
MSG's coverage of the NBA playoffs continues after the first quarter. Knicks by six over the Nets. Let's go to Mike Crispino. Mike. A guy can't go anywhere these days without being seen in public. You're here for this first Knicks playoff game. What have you been doing with yourself, Mark Messier, the last few days? Well, uh, we had Monday, Tuesday off, and we got back to work on Wednesday, and we've uh, been spending the week practicing, getting prepared for a Sunday, so things are looking good for us right now. Are you happy it's the Washington Capitals rather than the Pittsburgh Penguins? Not really. We weren't really too concerned about who we're going to play. I think anybody that's uh, the final eight right now, that all the teams are playing well. So if they beat Pittsburgh, obviously they're playing pretty well. All right, thanks much. Enjoy the game. Al, back to you. Okay, Mike, game two of the Eastern Conference semifinals. Rangers and Capitals right here on MSG Sunday night. Derek Coleman on the boards to start the second quarter with eight points. The Nets shot 24%, scoring 13. And the Knicks, who early on in the quarter were shooting 22%, rallied to finish above 40. Charles Smith down low, guarded by Morris. Greg Anthony picked up by Kenny Anderson. The double team and the foul against Greg Anthony. Greg Anthony came up to Charles Smith and asked him to roll in those situations, meaning move toward the basket. Johnny Newman gets his first exposure in game one. He's out there with John Starks in a matchup. Jason Williams with Patrick Ewing right now and Charles Smith guarding Derek Coleman. Traveling on Coleman. A flurry of traveling calls so far in this game. Coleman matched up on Anthony Mason. Coleman with a big height advantage. Make it difficult for Mason to do much offensively. Stark spins away from Johnny Newman, and a foul is called out at the three point line. Jason Williams, though, is calling on the foul. That's his first. Jason's had a very positive impact for the Nets guarding Patrick Ewing this year. He's very physical. Marvin Gillian checks into the lineup for New Jersey, and Chris Morris will take a seat. Opening minute of the second quarter. Starks. Way off on shot number three. It will be New Jersey ball. I think Patrick Ewing thought Starks was going to get it, and Starks thought Patrick Ewing was going to get it. Anderson drives on Anthony, uses the body to slow him down. That's trying to give, An uh, give Anderson uh, more room now by clearing out a bit. Coleman high over Smith. Beautifully done. Those are the skills of Derek Coleman. A quick dribble and the shot with a 6'10 man on him. Four points in the first 140 here in the second for Derek Coleman. First player to double figures with 10. Knicks have had seven different players score. Ewing on the much smaller Jason Williams drove to the basket and Jason Williams collects his second foul. So two fouls on both P.J. Brown and now Jason Williams for the Nets. And Benoit Benjamin takes off the warm-up, getting set to return. Chuck Daly will rotate Williams and Benjamin on Ewing. From his perspective, he's got 12 fouls to give up on trying to contain Ewing. Benoit Benjamin returns. Uh, a 2.3 rebound effort for him in the first quarter. Jason Williams can't be happy about the quick fouls. Ewing hits the second of two, and it's the next 20. And the next 17. This Knicks is still doing an excellent job on this man with the ball, Kenny Anderson. It started with Harper and Greg Anthony. He's picked it right up. John Stocks aggressively denying that ball to Johnny Newman. Ed Middleton and John Starks just had a great exchange. Middleton at first called it New Jersey. Starks went crazy. Middleton said, my mistake. Starks patted him on the behind, and it's Knicks ball. Due to the Knicks and Rangers playoff games at the Garden, this Sunday's performances of the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus has been canceled. Please call 
465 MSG1 or Ticketmaster for ticket refund information. Very intense defense by John Starks. Denying Johnny Newman that ball. It looked like the call was going in favor of the Nets, and then Ed Middleton changed the call, admitted the error, and John Starks appreciated it. On we go, 9.45 to go in the first half. Starks guarded by Johnny Newman, the ex Nick. Ewing posting up on Benjamin. He's clean to go one on one against him. Big rebound by Ewing, the fall away. And Patrick Ewing looks like he took a shot to the face, slow and getting up. But he looks all right. Johnny Newman way off on the three. Armin Gilliam with the offensive rebound. Kenny Anderson, a rough first half. Zero points, zero assists. Anthony and Derek Harper doing the job on defense. Benoit Benjamin lost it. Benoit started to move and forgot to use the basketball to take it with him. Charles Smith thinking offense. He's two for two. Oh, that's a big, big move by Charles Smith. And both outside jump shots for Smith, who has four. Mixed by five, 8.50 to go in the half. Gilliam drives around Ewing. And does not get the roll, but does get the foul. John Starks getting the call there as he uh, looked as though it might be going in Ewing's direction. John put his hand up quickly. Charles Smith at the other end for the Knicks. A beautiful spinning move. Finish, finished by a jump shot that splashes on through. Charles looking good from outside. Last three games of the regular season. All Nick wins. 16 points shot 50 percent from the floor average five rebounds and got 28 minutes a game and was able to do it away from home and maybe that was a, a good thing for Charles to do to get away from the garden a little bit you see the haircut hasn't uh, affected Charles negatively at all Al that fine shooting from the regular season finale uh, continues there'll be a foul and John Starks is called for the offensive foul that's two quick fouls for Starks John Starks trying to free himself and Johnny Newman guilty of a little push off on that play meanwhile the Knicks have come to a stop now offensively they got to lift it up again Pat Riley's decided John Starks debut deserves a little rest right now he returned dramatically hit a quick baseline jumper that was a little out of control and then missed his next two Derek Coleman. Oh no. Everyone thought it was going to be traveling, but it is a foul. Now that's the kind of call. It looked like it was going the Knicks way with their defense, but the official Jake O'Donnell is so emphatic in his call, no one's arguing with him. Knicks feel that the defense did it for them on that play. The official saw it another way. That's ball out of bounds. Johnny Newman guarded by Davis. And he can't get the roll. Yeah. Hubert Davis called for the foul, and Johnny Newman will go to the free throw line. Now, John, here's something that if you're the Nets, you really have to be concerned about. We've got 8-12 to go in the half, and the Nets as a team have only two assists. And Chris Morris has them both. Newman misses the free throw. Those two assists are more than he averaged per game all season long. Johnny Newman has some playoff experience, but his finest times in the playoffs, Al, as you look back, was in 1988 when he averaged 19 points a game for the Knicks in the playoffs. Mason out high, Gilliam sort of with him. Smith goes in on Coleman. Smith felt he was bumped. Great defensive play by Anthony. Armand Gilliam way out of control. Offensive foul on him as he unleashed a bad shot. Charles Smith does the best here. He gets those feet moving, gets to the position before Gilliam gets there, and draws the foul. Turnovers have been plentiful. Patrick Ewing. 
That's really having a tough time. Well, he's still continuing to try and beat the double and triple teams, Al. Ending up with a very difficult shot attempt. John, this game is reminiscent for Patrick Ewing of that game in the Meadowlands when he missed his first six shots. Right now, Patrick Ewing is one for eight, and Kenny Anderson has an opportunity to score his first points. Patrick has to recognize the double team means someone is open, even after he starts the move. Well, there's something for Ewing and Riley and the Knicks to smile about out there. On the play, Greg Anthony was called for a second foul. Now, the Knicks have been sitting on 22 points for quite a while. Too many minutes for them. They're not scoring enough now. They've got to get better shots, better ball movement. Kenny Anderson, 50% on that trip to the line. So he's got one point with no assists so far. Derek Coleman guards Ewing. Jake O'Donnell's yelling at Johnny Newman to get it down. I guess he means the elbows as Newman is called for a foul. He can get the hand up, too, for the foul. O'Donnell has a way of disciplining, disciplining his students out there. Smith. Mason's able to help out and save it. This is a three-point attempt. Benoit Benjamin has good position to get the rebound from Patrick Ewing. Mason, he will be all over Derek Coleman. There will be a lot of body bumping. And the contact and the defense forces Coleman to travel. Al, it was the game here on March 3rd. The one game in that the Knicks won, Mason did it to Coleman and was the difference in the fourth quarter. As expected, Patrick Ewing is getting a lot of defensive attention, and it's affected his shooting. Chuck Daly, a man who's used to seeing Patrick Ewing when he was coaching the Detroit Pistons and now the Nets, shows some very an interesting effect on Ewing, whose career field goal percentage is 52% against the Nets, though, this year. Poor shooting, 43% against Daly coach teams in the playoffs, 44%. Daly knows what he's doing when he says we're going to contain Patrick Ewing. Tight defense for both teams here in game one. Greg Anthony for Ewing. He finally has his second field goal. Ewing, two for nine. Benjamin, despite the uh, imploring of, his, of the coaching staff in the Nets, just does not present enough intensity against Ewing facing the basket. Perhaps Patrick will do more of that. The pride of Archbishop Malloy, Kenny Anderson, is struggling in the passing department. Kevin Edwards on the miss, gets his own rebound, and drops it in. Oh, Kevin Edwards is making an impact. After that shot was taken out, Hubert Davis backed up instead of going forward. And Edwards went around him for the follow. Kevin Edwards has half his season average in a quarter and a half. Mason tries to fake Gilliam. He doesn't buy it. Smith up strong. Charles Smith, three of four from the floor. That, that was just beautiful. That was that was a profound move. <laughs> Anderson guarded by Anthony to Derek Coleman, who's already committed four turnovers. Coleman, good look, but Benjamin couldn't handle it, but handles it enough to put in the layup. Some pass from Derek Coleman. Five minutes to go in the second quarter. Knicks by two. Charles Smith will go at Gilliam. One of the foul. Coleman for three. Oh, he can do just about everything. Perfect rotation, a high arcing rainbow, and the three-pointer has given the Nets a one-point advantage. He made 36 of them during the regular season. Doesn't live off them, but he can do it. Ewing on the baseline miss. Anderson flying up the floor. Gets around Anthony. Spins up on Davis and draws the foul. 
Anderson will go to the free throw line for the second time in this game. Hubert Davis has called for his second foul. Derek Harper and Anthony Mason, or Derek Harper and Charles Oakley replace Greg Anthony and Anthony Mason. It's been a struggle for Patrick Ewing. Two for ten from the floor, seven points, contested with every shot. Well, Greg Anthony did a good job on defense with Anderson, as did Harper, who just returned, but Greg uh, unable to get anything going offensively for the Knicks. Trademarks of the Knicks Nets games of the regular season. They're continuing here in game one of the playoffs. Patrick Ewing finding it difficult to get good shots off and making shots, period. Overplay there by Benoit Benjamin. Derek Coleman being a very big factor. He is. He has 13 points. Got a, only thing missing so far is Kenny Anderson. Looks have got to bounce those passes into you, and those long, long passes are too easy to deflect. Harper got position on Kenny Anderson, and Patrick Ewing found him. And Derek Harper will have a chance to end an 8-2 net run. Derek Harper uh, went the bald way. Oakley's on the floor. He did too. Charles Smith. Corey Gaines bought into it partially. So did Herb Williams. Anthony Bonner. Harper only played three games against the Nets this year and really did not have good good games nothing like he has been playing for the Knicks in the last over the last month but his defense tonight opening the game uh, set a, a fine precedent for the Knicks in the first half on Kenny Anderson Harper said in the first couple of months when he wasn't quite comfortable Pat Riley just keep kept coming at him saying just play basketball just play basketball nothing complicated just that as simple as that and Harper said eventually it sunk in well, what it translated to, Al, was just getting loose out there. Harper was afraid that he was taking some job and trying to be too dominant, so he went a little the other way. It's another tight battle between the Knicks and Nets. Kevin Edwards way off. Harper. Knicks need some creativity out there in the backcourt now. They've got to have some leadership that breaks down this Nets defense. Give and go. Ewing and Harper. That works out beautifully. Knicks back in front by one, Ewing with nine. Anderson gets Harper up and over, but Harper bothered him plenty. Four Knicks up the floor. Davis thought about the three. Ewing is open. He goes right at Coleman and follows his own miss. Ewing now in double digits with 11. Good read of the defense by Ewing. Didn't force the issue. You can tell, though, John, how much he thinks about Derek Coleman when he charges at him down the lane. Time out of the garden. Under three to go in the first half. Well, the upcoming games of this five-game, potentially five-game series are Sunday at 1230. And that's the Knicks here at the Garden. And Wednesday and Friday at the Meadowlands next week. Friday if, if there isn't a sweep by either team. And then Sunday if there is a game five. A week from this Sunday here at Madison Square Garden. And the start times of games four and five are TBA. Pat Riley's Knicks up three with 2.50 to go. Well, the defense at both ends of the floor has really been impressive. And I, I think that's one of the things that Chuck Daly probably worked the hardest and the longest to get this team to commit to. And now that they have, I think they're starting to, to feel the beginnings of success for this team. Coleman just fell down. Now he's guarded by Anthony Bonner. He pulls up for three plus and hits his second three-pointer of the game. That's what make him, makes him such a spectacular talent. Really, really was a bad shot by definition, and he makes those shots. He's such a good shooter. And one three-pointer gave his team the lead. That one gave his team a tie. 16 first-half points for Derek Coleman. Ewing. He draws three nets again. If 
Ewing would go to the left hand on those moves as he showed us a week or two ago here at the Garden. It would make the move so much more effective. Anderson uses the screen. Still can't get a shot to go. Danny Anderson 0 for 5 from the floor. Both his points have come from the free throw line. Now it's Oakley. Quiet offensively. Left-handed hook. Bodies go down. What a battle there. It's a jump ball, a battle to the floor between Derek Coleman and Charles Oakley. Well, the two power forwards going at it. Gilliam there on the defense on that very difficult attempt by Charles Oakley. Then Coleman coming in and wrestling with Charles Oakley right to the floor. Oakley, two points, three rebounds. A violation on Anthony Bonner. He headed toward the jump circle before the ball was tapped, and New Jersey will benefit. 31 31. Net shooting 34%. Knicks at 38%. Neither team getting any easy baskets. No fast breaks. Typical of. Playoff basketball intensity and half court offense and half court defense. Benjamin slaps the hand of Ewing away. Oh. Coleman tips the rebound to himself. Stolen by Charles Oakley. Oakley trying to go all the way. Great look, Bonner. They kick for Davis. The three. Bonner the putback. Thirty-three, thirty-one. Offer greeting Kenny Anderson at half court. Defense! Defense! Fans get back into it. Defense! Under ten on the twenty-four second clock. Oakley with another steal as he overplays Armin Gillian. Approaching the half minute mark of the first half. Harper all that. Himself as well. These two teams are flirting with an NBA record low for total points in the first half. They're at 66. The NBA record for the playoffs is 69. Edwards, it's a two, so they're at 68. And 16 seconds for the Knicks, who lead it by two. Oakley, Ewing tries to save it, and the buzzer sounds. It is an NBA playoff record low for points of both teams in a half of an NBA playoff game. 35 for the Knicks, the Nets 33, that's 68, breaking the record that has been in place once in 93, Seattle, Utah, and all the way back to 1955, Syracuse and Fort Wayne. We're at the Garden, and Mike Crispino will be with you when we come back. Back at halftime at Madison Square Garden, game one of the best of five between the Knicks and the Nets, and the eyes do not deceive a 35 to 33 score at halftime, more like a first quarter score, and a new NBA record for the fewest points in a half of a playoff game. We'll be back with more from the Garden, but first, let's go to Bob Page at the MSG Sports Desk. All right, thanks, Mike. Good evening, again, everybody. Three other playoff series kicking off in the NBA tonight. We have no highlights to show you yet because they are all later on. Chicago tipping off against Cleveland just a few moments from now. The Cavs are 3-1 and one versus the Bulls so far this year. And the two in the West, much later this evening, find Portland playing at Houston. And Golden State goes up against the Suns at Phoenix. Now, two very big games in the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs tonight. First of all, at the Meadowlands Arena, the Devils and Buffalo are playing Game 7 of their series. They are tied 1-1 late in the first period. John Muckler and the Sabres coming off that amazing 1-0 four-overtime win at Buffalo on Wednesday. Philippe Boucher opened the scoring six minutes in, but this is an unassisted goal by Bruce Driver. Bad goal against Dominic Hasek at 9:53 to tie it up his second of the playoff series. Meanwhile, at Boston, Bruins and Montreal 
Montreal playing game seven of their series. Just 3.43 in. It's Glenn Murray beating Patrick Waugh, his second of the series, to make it 1 0. And then Jacques Demers later on saw Ted Donato score at the 11.40 mark, and it is 2 0 now. Reeves was reunited with Arthur Marshall, the wideout who played for him in Denver. Jens just traded for him and signed guys like Keith Elias, the former Princeton star. Most of the attention today directed at unheralded number one draft choice Thomas Lewis, who may have something to prove. I think I have anything to prove. I think it's, it's um, pressure. I mean, of course, because, you know, you're coming to New York, you know, where you got diehard fans. And, you know, when you're drafted number one, they want you to come and produce. I mean, I, I realized that, you know, that's my goal and, you know, that's what I have to do here. And, you know, it's something I was going to have to do regardless of if I was a second round, third round, or fourth round pick, you know, I was going to have to come in and perform and produce. So, I mean, I don't see that as, as any different being a number one other than, you know, just the way people look at it. Lewis did not work out today due to a hamstring problem. Stay tuned. We're going back to courtside next. I'm starting a family. I wanted a car I could enjoy driving that wouldn't kill our budget. I got a new Jetta 3 at Douglas, and they even threw in the infant seat. If you visit us, you'll do business with us. Douglas Volkswagen, in the heart of Summit, just minutes from Route 24. Back on the floor of the garden where we have witnessed a record for the first half in terms of points being scored. The least, 68 between the two teams. Here's the Jeep and Eagle leading scorer summary brought to you by our Tri-State Jeep and Eagle dealers. There's only one Jeep, and it's only your Tri-State Jeep and Eagle dealers. Patrick Ewing with 11 points, 4 for 14 shooting for Patrick. He missed four of his first five. Derek Carper chipped in with six. John Starks had two as well, playing seven minutes in his first action back after the knee problems. Derek Coleman led the way for the Nets. 16 points. Kevin Edwards, Edwards with nine. Kenny Anderson, a poor first half for him, just two points. Did not score a basket from the field and played all 24 minutes. Joining me now, Walt Clyde Frazier. Let's first talk about the defense played by the Nets on Mr. Ewing and how are the Knicks going to combat that in the second half? Yeah, Ewing must relinquish the ball sooner. When he's double or triple team, he has to find the open man. He did it a couple of times, and Knicks scored very easily. The other thing, Ewing must stay on the low post. Most of his shots have come from the perimeter. And once out of a timeout, Pat Riley had a good play where the Knicks penetrated and kicked it out to Patrick Ewing. Let's take a look at the uh, highlights now, brought to you by Minolta. New York Knicks basketball is brought to you in part by the Discover Card. It pays to discover the card that pays you back. By MetLife. Get Met. It pays. And by Coca-Cola Classic. Always jamming. Always Coca-Cola. Back at halftime of game one of the best of five with the Knicks leading by two, 35-33. Moments ago, the MetLife Nick of the Year Award announced by Jeff Hodgman, the senior vice president for MetLife. On behalf of MetLife, I am delighted to present the MetLife Nick of the Year Award to Charles Oakley and Patrick Ewing. In addition, MetLife will present a check for $5,000 to the charity selected by them. Congratulations. The MetLife Nick of the Year Award winner, a dual winner, Charles Oakley, Patrick Ewing. Oakley won it in three months. Patrick Ewing won it in two. Previous winners, Patrick won it a couple different times. Gerald Wilkins back in 86-87 and Mark Jackson in 87-88. Since 1984, number two seeds have played number seven 20 times. Number two has won 17 times. And now we go back to Al Trotwig and John Andres for the second half. Yeah, Mike, in terms of that, the Knicks have the numbers on their side. And here at halftime, they've got two points on their side. Very unimpressive uh, numbers when you look at the stats. Both teams with 22 rebounds. Anthony Bonner doing a good job with seven to lead the Knicks. 11 turnovers for the Nets cost them 14 points. That's an awful lot in the half when the Knicks scored only 35. 14 of the Knicks, 35 off turnovers. On we go, and Oakley rejects the rookie, P.J. Brown. Opening seconds of the third quarter with the Knicks up two in a record-setting first half of an NBA playoff game in terms of fewest points scored. Harper. Derek Harper is all net. He's three for five with eight points. Second on the Knicks in scoring to Patrick Ewing. One other number. Knicks bench outscoring the Nets bench. 10-2. Derek Coleman draws the foul on the floor before the shot. 
What makes Coleman so tough is the quickness that he has at 6'10", the dribble, and then the quick execution off the dribble of that shot. Since it was before the shot, and the Knicks obviously below the limit on Oakley's first foul and their first foul of the second half, it is a non-shooting foul. Kenny Anderson did not score a basket in the first half. Benoit Benjamin. Ewing uses an arm to keep him away. Benjamin breaks free with a great move. Patrick Ewing, Al, is going out of his way not to commit fouls. So he has one foul in the game thus far. He's got to step it up defensively. Harper. Unbelievable. Coleman was waiting right there. He changed the shot and had tremendously successful spin on the ball. Knicks by four. Derek Harper's 48 game playoff history 48 games he's played in the playoffs this is not nervous time for him Kenny Anderson finally on the board and he does it with a three-pointer Kenny Anderson and Derek Coleman both played the entire first half for the Nets Anderson was 0 for 5 in that first half Ewing played 23 minutes to lead the Knicks a tremendous amount for the Nets to earn here in this opening round and a lot for the Knicks to lose obviously Harper sets the screen Anderson pulls away from it it's Derek Harper again well, they played some important games in his experience with the Mavericks in those playoff games John and he said this week it's good to be back in the playoffs you know what I like further about Harper Al Ewing on the deflection of Benjamin. Oakley gets it somehow to Bonner who beats Benoit. Oh, Derek Coleman round. Bonner was on the run and Oakley somehow got it to him. One of the very few fast break baskets for either team. The thing I was saying about Harper, Al, talking about playoff intensity, Harper said, hey, this is going to be fun. Well, compared to the first half, this is a scoring bonanza. Ewing up high, hit by P.J. Brown. If it's on him, it's his third. Terrific rebound by Ewing. In that, he wasn't just going straight up. He was going lateral. Those are the hard rebounds to get. Ewing now with 11 points and seven rebounds. Third foul is called on P.J. Brown. You know Harper doesn't want to keep taking all the shots. Oakley drives on Coleman. And it'll be a loose ball foul. On Anthony Bonner. Charles Oakley might be a little frustrated. He hasn't put up big numbers in this game. Certainly not the double double that we're so used to in the regular season. Oakley, two points, four rebounds. The Nets bench in the first half, two points, no field goals. Ewing out for Harper, who sees Davis. Gets away from Edwards. Hubert Davis. He's got six points, three of five. He's been very judicious in his shot taking, but they've all been memorable. The Garden comes to life and to their feet. Mix up by seven, their biggest lead of the game. Defense, and it's starting to dig in now more and more. Patrick Ewing on his first rejection of the game. That opens up an opportunity for that very tricky pass by Charles Oakley to Anthony Bonner, who beats Derek Coleman for the finish. Knicks now enjoying a seven-point lead. Hubert Davis also fakes the long shot, goes to that short jumper off the dribble. That's a shot, Al, you don't see much of these days, and it's a great shot. And it's that mid-range jumper that the Knicks need so desperately to hit. Point guard matchups now. Derek Harper and Kenny Anderson. Anderson finally in the scoring column. With a field goal, first field goal in the second half now, Derek Harper having a splendid game, defensively and offensively. Both teams have taken six third quarter shots. Knicks have made five, New Jersey's made two. That'll be a foul against the Knicks. Anthony Bonner pleading his case to Jake O'Donnell. It's on Bonner. That's a very tight call by Jake O'Donnell. Very tight call. Bonner has trouble believing that one. 
Chuck Daly makes the first move of the third quarter, pulling P.J. Brown and returning Chris Morris to the game. Edwards met by Bonner. A wild whirl away. You know, Al, six, five years in Miami for this man, Kevin Edwards. He was a forgotten man. They have so many backcourt men. Now in his sixth year with the Nets, and he cost them a, he actually didn't cost them anything. He was a free agent signing. What a year he's had. His best year as a pro with the Nets, and he came as a free agent. Bonner is foul. Kevin Edwards, 11 points on 5 of 12 shooting. Was it about Rod Strickland's backcourt made at DePaul, right? That's right. Very good. Very understated player. You don't hear much about him, but he was the third leading scorer against the Knicks this year. 13 a game. 14 a game on the average for the season. Quiet guy, full of athleticism, and he's really hurt the Knicks this season. Willis Reed's made some good moves. Willis, by the way, not here at the Garden tonight, his old stomping ground. He prefers to stay home and watch it on TV. Hi, Willis. As Willis made it clear he'd be a viewer tonight. Knicks by six, 46 to 40. Anderson for Edwards, Davis right on him. Coleman spins on Bonner. I think Ewan got a piece of it. Bonner breaks out. And is fouled as he crossed the midcourt line and maybe got lucky because I think he was on the verge of getting out of control at that point. That dribble was high. Now what the Knicks have to do is continue the action. Knicks converging on Coleman, making it a tough shot. The dribble gets away from Coleman, but he's fouled at that moment. Knicks can't relax on their six-point lead. It was Kenny Anderson who fouled Anthony Bonner for his second. Ewing's pass is blocked. The double team works to perfection. Anderson to Edwards. Beautifully done by Kenny Anderson for his third assist. 7.15 to go in the third quarter with the Knicks up four. And Ewan slapped away by Benjamin, but fouled in the process. Patrick is not giving Benjamin much versatility. It is the same move. Right-handed dribble going right to left and then turning into Benjamin. Very hard shot to get off against a seven-foot man defending you. And these are only going to be Patrick Ewing's fifth and sixth free throw attempts. I think you'd say not enough, and you certainly would say not enough in terms of fouls drawn against Benoit Benjamin. That was only Benjamin's first personal foul. In the first half, Ewing was three for four from the line. The only other man to go to the line for the Knicks was Harper. He was one for two. The Knicks in the first half shot four, six foul shots while making four. Knicks 6 of 10 from the free throw line. Up 5. Anderson with the ball. Guarded by the bald-headed Derek Harper. Steele with some help from Charles Oakley. Ewing the handoff. Harper with an amazing pass to Oakley. He follows it. Still is. It's Oakley again. And the foul! He just would not give up. What an inspiring field goal that was. Charles Oakley taking over space, doing everything he can, not allowing himself rejection, and finally the finish. Another angle. Every working man in this building related to that field goal, Al. Well, that was a three rebound and a three point play for Charles Oakley. 6.40 to go. The Garden buzzing after that. Knicks by eight. It's their biggest lead. Morris looks for Coleman, and he's fouled by Patrick Ewing. Knicks had a lead of seven. Nets came back. Knicks now back up by eight. Knicks' biggest lead in the first half was six. The Nets at one point had a lead of four. Derek Coleman to the line with 16 points. Hasn't yet scored in the second half. One for two to the line. Derek Coleman having a sensational season this year among league leaders in scoring and in rebounding. An all-star this year. A true star in the NBA. It took a little while for him to get recognized. 
But like anybody who wants individual recognition, they have to lead their team to victories. And it's started to happen. Ewing a little sloppy with that ball. Derek, Derek Harper was heading up the floor, and Patrick Ewing put the ball where he used to be. Fans very active with their air ball and brick signs, and they got the brick variety from Coleman on that second free throw. Under six and a half to go in the third. Chris Morris tries to get involved. Ewing challenged by Coleman, just saved by Davis. Ewing, he keeps going. With a lot of control at the finish. Mets counter. And Harper fouls Kevin Edwards. Good foul, good foul by Harper. A very forceful foul, denying that field goal. Kenny Anderson with the bounce pass. Anderson, unselfish. That's a real foul. That's the way to stop a guy. And there was no bad blood. Chris Daly showing he's still got the moves at 63 years of age. How to avoid those wrinkles in the suit. Kevin Edwards hits the first free throw. Well, he's been right up there with Derek Coleman as an MVP so far in this game. Patrick Ewing broke the rule, though, on that last attempt by him to go the full length of the court. He just kind of ran out of gas at the end of the move. Davis for Harper. Oakley and Bonner team up for the rebound. Oakley rifles it for Davis. He's thinking all the way. Another sensational drive by Hubert Davis. Nice to see John Starks also jump up off the bench and yell encouragement after that move. Starks and Anthony Mason both returned to action in the first half and hit their first shots. And obviously, uh, those moments were big hits here at the Garden. Coleman way off, but Morris with a big... Athletic follow. So you have position, but if you don't put your body on the man, that's what happens. Oakley was in front of Morris. Morris just jumped over him. First points of the game for the man who can be a big spark plug for this Nets team, Chris Morris. Ewing lost the handle. Three turnovers for Ewing, Al, in the last three minutes. But then Kevin Edwards ran into problems, and the turnover will give the ball over to the next. Bounce pass into Ewing. It's deflected from behind. Patrick really didn't reach out for that ball and control it. It's a nice recovery by Hubert Davis. He made something happen. How about that? Charles Oakley's becoming the master of the alley, and that time it was Bonner on the oops. Knicks again by seven. Bonner on the oops. First time I heard that, Al. Very nice. I had a whole week, John. <laughs> for Coleman. Bonner's right there with him. Can Coleman handle that ball. Coleman draws a foul. He and Ewing exchange trash talking words. Ewing shoves him out of the way. Jason Williams gets involved. And Ewing walks away from it. The thing is, Al, Ewing put his hands on Coleman. Coleman was full of glances, full of his intimidating glances, but Patrick put his hands on him as he, as he went, got to him. And we've got some technical foul damage. I believe they're going to be offsetting technical fouls. Anti-Coleman chance underway. Chris Morris trying to cool off ex-Redman Jason Williams. Ewan getting roughed up and then exiting stage left. Offsetting technicals to Jason Williams and Derek Harper. Harper and Jason Williams got into it. Jason, a very, as Clyde would say, loquacious guy. And Harper right in there as well. Coleman sees the signs again and ignores them. Next by six, the first real obvious sign of tension and anger between these two teams. Well, Coleman is coming up big now with the glances when he is fouled, inviting uh, visual meetings and intimidation 
and response and that's what happened when Patrick caught his eye and then walked into him and they bumped and there was a little shove there. And the Knicks have turned up the defense on him. This is only his third second half point. Four and a half to go with the Knicks up five. It's about where it's been here in the third quarter. A spurt to get the quarter underway and then it's been five, six, and seven. And Ewing tangles with Jason Williams and it's just becoming one of those nights. Patrick's sixth turnover now in the game. Actually, when you consider Patrick against this team, it's just one of those New Jersey net nights. Bonner jumps out to help Harper. Chris Morris. Now Coleman. Bonner waiting. What defense by Anthony Bonner. Morris skying for the rebound. Knicks have got to keep Morris off the boards. Oakley went flying to try and save it, but it's a reload for New Jersey. Davis. Harper in there to try and steal it away. Anderson. Oh, that's a good-looking shot by Kenny Anderson in a lot of traffic. You know it's admirable, Al? Anderson, who's not scoring a lot, he's their second-leading scorer, is not forcing shots. He's really staying within himself and taking what he can get. I think Derek Coleman got shaken up on the play and called a 20-second timeout. And he makes his way slowly to the net bench. With 3.38 left in the third quarter, Derek Coleman leaves the game. Looked like he took an elbow in the mouth. Drew some blood. Coleman heading to the boards. Got an Oakley massage in the mouth. And the uh, trainer gave him some assistance when he went to the bench. Now he has left the floor. Well, he was bleeding, and you cannot bleed and play in an NBA game. So I guess his only option was get it stitched or close it up somehow and, and then get back in. 3.35 to go. It is the Knicks by three. Derek Harper, it's a two. Everybody's pushing and shoving. Nothing is easy. Not a rebound, not a shot. Kevin Edwards picks it for Jason Williams. He gets whacked. His shot is off, and Bonner has the ball almost swept away by Edwards. Davis wide open for three. Edwards. Out of the pack. What a pass. Well, Armin Gillian and Jason Williams and Kevin Edwards and Kenny Anderson love to run. And this net lineup that's on the floor is going to want to do that. What a great fast break. Edwards had the man on his right and his left, and he chose the big man, Gillian, for the finish. Beautifully done. Scoop pass. Very deceptively done. And boy, was that delivered with perfect timing. Armin Gilliam, five points, five rebounds, and it is a 12-4 run for the New Jersey Nets. It's a tie game. Knicks have led by as many as eight here in the third. Ewing, his problems continue in a big way. Good job by Jason Williams making Ewing take that long fallaway jumper. Charles Smith has entered the game for the Knicks. And Armin Gilliam beats Patrick Ewing. Ewing is not playing defense aggressively. Now, last season with Philadelphia, where Armin Gilliam played, there were many times where Gilliam went up against Ewing, and I think he had a fair amount of success. I think Gilliam's got to feel some confidence in doing that. Ewing, another off-balance shot. He's fouled and will go to the line with 2.10 to go. Anthony Mason getting set to make his second appearance in the game. Mason played nine first half minutes, scored two and grabbed a rebound. Jason Williams called for his third personal foul. Knicks had to see what happened to Orlando and Atlanta. They work an entire season to get the home court advantage and bang. In a short five-game series, it's gone like that. What hurt the Knicks throughout the season has been their field goal percentage shooting against the Nets. 43% now for the game. 
That is what they averaged in four out of four five games against the Nets, which they lost. Nets have tied the Knicks at 56. Before those free throws, the Nets responded to Derek Coleman's absence by rolling off five straight points. Edwards a bit of an off balance fallback Ewing with the rebound and now Harper under two minutes in the quarter a low scoring game you just know everything is going to be critical and a three pointer absolutely huge Hubert Davis the man he's got 11 points five of eight from the floor Boy, Hubert's stomach is getting stronger and stronger with big shots like that. And how important are all those regular season minutes for Hubert Davis in the absence of John Starks on. Chris Morris answers with a three for New Jersey. He wasn't very successful in hitting those down the stretch of the regular season, but Morris good there with 70 seconds to go. Tied again at 59. Hubert not forcing the move. Good play by him. Oakley sees Rome. Charles Oakley's played a rock solid tough third quarter. Seven points, eight rebounds for Oakley. No real shot blocker out there like Benjamin for the Nets. That middle was soft and Oakley made the most of it. Anderson saw the ball go off his sneaker. Oakley with a sliding grab. And Oakley had the presence of mind to call timeout and Joe, Jake O'Donnell gave it to him. Oh, it's just amazing how a six foot nine man with his bulk is so quick to a loose ball. And Charles Oakley going for that loose ball fearlessly and also got the timeout. I think Oakley had the timeout for about five tenths of a second, and that's when Jake O'Donnell gave him the call. You look back over the long regular season of 82 games, and Charles Oakley was the sixth best rebounder in the NBA. Patrick Ewing, number 10. Derek Coleman right there in the middle at number nine in the NBA. What a dramatic difference we've seen in this third quarter. 32 points combined in the first. 36 combined second quarter points, and now 52 here in the third. You would think that as the game got closer to the end, it would shut down, but it's opening up. Doc Rivers at the end of the bench with Eric Anderson. Doc, you know, dying to play. Wishes he was in sneakers right now. He talked realistically about that decision that the Knicks had to make. Eric Harper. Oh, man, crossover dribble, and he was by the younger Kenny Anderson. Derek Harper showing all his years of experience. 14 points for New York. Inside of a half minute in the third quarter, it is the Knicks by four as New York responds to that New Jersey burst with a 9-3 run. Jason Williams, hard off the rim. Chris Morris with an unbelievable follow slam. The Knicks continue to allow Morris to go to the boards untouched. That was unbelievable how high he was, the timing, everything. Harper way off Mason. Oh, he was under the basket. It looked like he had the shot, but he went under from left to right, and the clock ticked away. The next 63, the next 61. New York Knicks basketball is brought to you in part by Reebok, who reminds you that on planet Reebok, there are no boundaries. By the United States Postal Service, Priority Mail, we deliver for you. And by Mobile Super Plus. Drive into the Big Red O and drive your engine clean with new Mobile Super Plus, the detergent gasoline. Yes, these are the NBA playoffs on MSG. Game one of the East first round with the Knicks in front of New Jersey by a score of 63-61. The start of the fourth quarter, and it is Nick Ball. Derek Harper guarded by Kenny Anderson. Mason guarded by Armand Gilliam. And Hubert Davis is rejected by Johnny Newman. 
Oakley with Jason Williams, Charles Smith with Chris Morris. And Morris with one of the best putback dunks you'll ever see in the closing seconds of the third. Newman bangs with Davis. Charles Smith with the rebound. Long look up floor. Oakley had a no look for Mason. That was untouchable. Gilliam. In the absence of Derek Coleman, who's getting stitched up in the New Jersey locker room, the Nets are keeping it tough. Tied again at 63. Come on, Gilliam has adjusted so well to his off the bench role for the Nets. Derek Harper wants to take the shot. Pat Riley has told John Starks to get ready, wondering whether still crunch time is Starks time. And Ewing will re-enter the game with Starks when it happens. Gilliam over Charles Smith. And it just does fall, and Chris Morris just does miss the offensive goaltending. William having a major presence now. He looks in great shape. He's thinned down now. Hasn't missed a shot, John. He's four for four with seven rebounds and 11 points. Oakley kicks it out for Harper. He resists, moves to the basket. Charles Oakley was on his way. Mason couldn't get the spin. Charles Smith couldn't get the follow, but draws the foul. Ewing back, Starks back, Greg Anthony back. Harper out, Oakley out. And Hubert Davis out. Very free substituting by Pat Riley now. First free throws in the game for Charles Smith. Well, he was outstanding in the first half. 12 minutes, three of five. Pat Riley watched him score six. And you wonder how many things planned and figured by these two great coaches have come to pass. How many little nuances did they create in matchups and switches and play running that have happened and how many haven't worked out the way they thought. Well, one of the major stories is the containment by the Knicks of this man, Kenny Anderson. The combination of the point guard and the help coming over to stop and push him off to the side. Anderson well off, and that's going to be a loose ball foul on Johnny Newman. He shoved John Starks out of the way. And it's getting down to those nervous final moments with the Nets up by one. Bob Page recently spoke to Chuck Daly about what it's like to coach against Pat Riley. Coaching against him is nothing new. I've been doing it for a lot of years between Detroit and uh, other aspects. It's a real challenge. He's easily one of the best coaches in the league, if not the best coach. And, uh, you know, I kind of idolize him. Really? Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, I'd like to uh, be a lot more like him. Unfortunately, I'm myself. Pretty shrewd. Little is said that doesn't have some sort of calculated edge. And Chuck Daly with his longtime assistant and friend, Brendan Sir, at his side. Greg Anthony guarded by Kenny Anderson, Smith, and Starks. Derek Coleman has returned for New Jersey. But it's Armand Gilliam who has emerged in this fourth quarter and the late stages of the third to really be an impact player for New Jersey. Gilliam, almost a double-double, 11 points, and that was his ninth rebound. Ewing with a big rebound. John Starks on the run with Anderson back. Now the Knicks right now with a very interesting backcourt. Greg Anthony who has not really done much tonight. John Starks newly returned after that long absence. And now a quick technical foul has been called by Ed Middleton. Anthony Mason in there tangling with Armin Gilliam. Greg Anthony involved as well. And the technical foul to Mason will send Kenny Anderson to the line. The contact appeared a bit excessive by Mason. Anderson all net. Well, Derek Coleman has returned. Let's go over to Mike Crispino and find out what happened in his absence. Mike. 
Al, what happened was Derek Coleman was in the locker room getting four stitches in his upper lip. It, it turns out not being as bad as they thought when they went in because he was bleeding profusely as he headed to the locker room, but he's okay and back on the floor. Came back just about a minute ago. Kenny Anderson lets go. And it does stay in. A two-pointer for Kenny Anderson. And the Nets have to be making the Knicks nervous here. Up four and Derek Coleman back on the floor. Meanwhile, in Coleman's absence, Gilliam has been sensational with 11 points. Nine of them coming in the second half. John Starks wild along the baseline. The foul is called on Greg Anthony. So it is still New Jersey ball. You can tell that John Starks is trying to make things happen on that fast break a moment ago on that drive and you can see some of the things that usually work for him aren't necessarily there physically just yet. Knicks without a field goal in the last four minutes. Coleman the ball slapped away by Mason. 8 20 to go here at the Garden in game one. Ewing spins on Coleman and the foul. Somehow Patrick got into the rhythm of a different move. And what a beautiful move it was. Starts left, goes around right, and to the rim. Another look at it. Beautiful move. No double team because the execution was so fast. Just a great move by Ewing. And it was creativity that he so desperately needed. Ewing with that make. Five of 18 from the floor. He has 16 of the quietest points you'll ever see him score. Ten rebounds for Ewing as well. The Knicks within one. They've led by as many as eight in the second half, and that was in the third quarter. Coleman screens Anthony and pulls away. Here's Morris for three. Over the top of Nick Ball. The Nets had hit their last four three-pointers in a row. Al, be interesting to me how long Pat Riley sits Harper. Harper has been the dominant point guard in this game tonight. Starks guarded by Newman. Whips it for Smith. Goes up and is hit and it falls. They're up and cheering on their feet for Charles Smith. <laughs> Awfully big finish by Charles. He kept powering his way to the basket. He made Morris small in the process. And you know what's nice for Charles? He's not gloating. That was a very good move. Ewing with the follow on the miss. And he shows some emotion as the Knicks have reclaimed the lead, 71-68. Pat Riley saying stay up and pressure the ball. The atmosphere dramatically different in the last 30 seconds. Anderson pressured. They thought he traveled. Foul against New Jersey. Oh, Stocks is hurt. He doesn't want to lay on the floor. He's holding his back and writhing in pain. Don Starks looks at Riley and Mike Saunders, Nick's trainer, and shakes his head and says, no, don't take me out, but... Al, that happened in Atlanta. John Starks, when he hurt the leg in Atlanta, stayed in the game. He shook it off. He's such a willing player. Or oh, he fell right on his back. Flush on the floor. On we go. Charles Smith gets hit on his way to the hoop, and they call it a jump ball. Now, Jake O'Donnell's... He reaffirms the call by Ed Middleton. Well, John Stocks leaving the floor to go to the locker room for attention. Another look at John Stocks getting driven to the floor. And he hurt the back when he hit the floor. Smith and Armin Gilliam go up. It is Nick Ball on the tip. 7.15 to go. And Nick Flurry to give them a three-point lead. Matt Riley wants that ball to go to Ewing. Greg Anthony for three. Got it! Greg's first field goal of the game. And what a big one. Concluding a 10-0 run for the Knicks.
thanks to our AT&T long distance shooting example. We'll see one of the reasons why they just had a 10-0 run against the Nets. Greg Anthony with his first field goal of the game. And the garden is rocking and the Knicks bench is rocking. This is what it looked like as they watched Greg Anthony take the three. You know, Al, what was outstanding also, the Knicks had called out a play for Ewing. And Patrick moved that ball so well to the open man after he got it. They've got the towel thing going at the garden. Derek Carper's been standing and waving one above his head. A 10-0 Nick run with the exclamation point being the Greg Anthony three-pointer. Not a bad way to score your first points in a playoff game. The Knicks by six, 74-68. John Starks out of the Knicks locker room. Well, frowning, you know, he's not happy. He's been waiting more than six weeks to get these big minutes in the fourth quarter. Hubert Davis right in on Johnny Newman. Anthony Mason into this matchup with Coleman. Seven on the 24. Anderson for three. Ewing's got it. Out. I got to point out, Anthony Mason in the one victory by the Knicks here at the Garden March 3rd took over Derek Coleman in the fourth quarter and owned him defensively. He's doing it now. He's matched up with him. Coleman grabs the rebound on the Ewing miss. Patrick Ewing now is now a startling six for 20. Kenny Anderson, by the way, with the ball is three for 11. Armand Gillian. Ewing battles Benoit Benjamin for Anthony, who just gets away. Six to go in the fourth. Riley screaming right behind Davis. Ewing. Well, Benjamin sort of gave him the shot. He really was not in Patrick's face on the miss. Kevin Edwards returns. And Mike Crispino with a report on John Starks. Mike. All right, thanks, Al. John Starks does have a bruised lower back, is returning if he can. He's back on the bench, but he's still walking very gingerly. Back to you. Yeah, Mike, and just moments ago, I think we saw him slide an ice pack on that bruised back. Derek Coleman bangs into Mason. Oh, what a move. Mason was with him the whole way, and then Coleman pulled something out of the bag of tricks. Mason. Net ball. No Walked foul. Away. No foul. Net ball. Mason, I felt, thought there was a foul call because the way he reacted, he played great defense on Coleman. Five seconds on the 24 second clock for New Jersey to get off a shot. Coleman, quick release. Ewing tips it to himself. And a loose ball foul. It is against the Knicks and Charles Smith. Second foul against Smith. Now, the key matchup right now is Mason on Coleman. And Mason said when he denied him on March 3rd, he said, my role is to deny him the ball in any comfort zone position. That's what he's trying to repeat. Steal by Davis with help from Ewing and Anthony. Ewing screen for Anthony. It's a double screen for Davis. Shovels for Smith, and now Anthony for three. Net ball. Well, the ball movement by the Knicks was good. They got an open shot. And this looks like it's going right down to the wire. And that wire is 450 away. Armand Gillian goes right at Charles Smith and draws a foul. Be interesting to see if Pat Riley goes back to Oakley. That's two quick fouls on Charles Smith, his third now. And Armand Gillian will go to the line. Very tough to if you're Riley now. Do I go back to Harper, who's had an outstanding game? Do I go back to Oakley, who's the heart and soul of this team? Or do I stay with Smith and Anthony, both of whom have played well? Right now on the floor is Ewing, Mason Smith, Davis, and Anthony. 74-69 after that. 
New Jersey with Kevin Edwards, Kenny Anderson, Derek Coleman, Armand Gilliam, and Benoit Benjamin. Ewing stopped by Benjamin on the fall away, and oh, the late call. Yeah, Bill Oaks with the late whistle, but he said there was contact on the shot. Wisely getting the ball into Ewing, who spins off Benjamin. But Benjamin, to his credit, challenged Ewing. He didn't let him take that shot uncontested. Ewing from the line. Seven of ten after that miss. You remember the game here at Madison Square Garden in the midst of the five-game season series where Patrick Ewing had a chance to tie the game with virtually no time left on the clock and missed the two free throws. One for two this time, and it's the Knicks by six, 75-69. Up on 4.20 to go, and Charles Oakley has taken off the warm-ups and getting ready to come back in. Greg Anthony fights through the Derek Coleman screen. Ten on the 24-second clock. Anthony is hit. That's an offensive foul. Coleman got him. Coleman drove him down. That's why you need three officials to see some of his action off the ball. Coleman driving Anthony, Greg Anthony to the floor. I think all those objective would have to say the right call. Knicks need results now at the offensive end. They cannot sit and nurse a six-point lead. They need more. Smart move by Daly to stay in there with Armand Gilliam. And not the rookie, P.J. Brown, who struggled in foul trouble. As Gilliam has responded. He guards Smith, who goes the other way. Oh, what a gigantic drive. He exploded once he got to the baseline and came up on the other side. Mixed by eight. And a foul as Coleman went to the basket. He and Ewing exchanged words again. Ewing is not interested, though, in a belligerent response to Coleman, to his credit. Charles Smith with a sensational drive up and under. Oh, man, that was, that was the move of a small forward, which is the definition of Charles since he's been with the Knicks. That move and the follow dunk by Chris Morris earlier, without a doubt, in my mind, the two offensive highlights of the game. Coleman on the line. It's a 13-2 run, and he has been closed out with only four second-half points. Make it five, 340 to go. And Pat Riley's got a little bit of a problem in Charles Smith. He has four personal fouls now, and he's playing extremely well. Pat Riley going with size now. Mason did the great job on Coleman, but Riley likes the size factor that you oh, he's doing it all. Gives the fans a look as he runs up the floor. And Ewing and Armand Gilliam go at it. Quickly separated. Hubert Davis was there, so was Kevin Edwards, Greg Anthony. Greg O'Donnell not fooling around. It's the second time we've had offsetting technicals in this game. Earlier it was Anthony Mason and Jason Williams. Now it's Armand Gilliam and Patrick Ewing. Coleman on the miss. They say it's off Oakley. Oakley very fortunate because Coleman breezed around him with Charles standing still. And Ewing and Gilliam getting into it moments ago. Result being offsetting technical fouls. That was mostly vocal. By the way, the earlier tees were Williams and Derek Harper. This did not happen with Mason on Coleman. Coleman right away going around Oakley. Now the Knicks huddle up with 3.08 to go. Their lead is eight. That ties their biggest lead of the game. Derek Coleman at the line in this second half. Well, Pat Riley's rethinking this. You know he's rethinking it. Coleman's at the free throw line. Zero for five from the floor in the second half. Three rebounds. Five points with a chance for seven here. Well, John, game ones usually and sometimes set the tone for a series. If the tone is being set here tonight, it's going to be tight, and it's going to be exciting. Knicks by seven, 3.08 to go. 
remember when you're having good times with friends, use good sense and drink responsibly because friends know when to say when. A reminder from Budweiser. And John, it had to feel great for Charles Smith just a few moments ago to feel so at home here at the Garden to let his emotions all hang out for everyone to see after this move. Charles with the flat-footed jump shot. He enjoyed massaging Celebrity Row as he came back up court. Charles, six of nine from the field. 13 points, five rebounds. Pat Riley stays with Ewing, Smith, and Oakley. Anthony and Davis. Derek Coleman at the line, down by seven. Make it six, so Coleman hits the big free throws. And it's clear New Jersey's going to pressure the ball. Greg Anthony for the free Oakley for Smith. Had some space, but kicks it out. Under three minutes to go in the fourth quarter of game one. Davis, quick look Ewing. And he is fouled by Benoit Benjamin. That'll be the third foul on Benjamin. And as Ewing goes to the line, let's get this update from Bob Page. Now at Chicago, late second quarter, Gerald Wilkins with the basketball to Mark Price. Back to the ex Nick for two of his team high first half points. Surprise. Injury riddled Cleveland with a two point lead at intermission. Okay, Bob, Mike Fratello deserves some sort of a gold star or something. He's got no front line. It's unbelievable. No Nance, no Darty, no John Williams. Patrick Ewing hits both free throws. In Ewing. clutch fashion, 81-73 Knicks. He's now 10 of 13 from the line. Kenny Anderson to Armin Gilliam. He's met by Patrick oh, Ewing. Strong response by Ewing. Strong. Charles Oakley just yelled at Armin Gilliam right in his face. Take that. And now Ewing's letting him have it too. Yes, I think some tremendous groundwork has been laid for the remaining games in this series. But a lot to go here. Ewing over Benjamin. Coleman with a big rebound. 2.20 remaining. Oakley. Stride for stride with Derek Coleman. And now 15 on the 24 second clock. Coleman's going to go for it and draw another Charles Oakley foul. Last time down court, though, Gilliam going baseline. Thought he had a dunk, but Ewing goes up and greets him, sends that shot away. Patrick Ewing leads the Knicks with 22 points. Derek Harper, 14. Charles Smith, 13. Hubert Davis, 11. The man on the line leads New Jersey with 23. It stays at 23. Kevin Edwards, 15 points. Armand Gilliam off the bench for 12 and 10 rebounds. Kenny Anderson with 10 points on 3 of 11 shooting. Coleman abiding by his average of getting to the line in double figures against the Knicks. He's now 10 of 12 from the line tonight. 12 was the average against the Knicks this year. The Knicks break the pressure and Charles Smith wants all of it. Oh, he went up for the big slam and drew the foul. You, you, you know what you're seeing, Al, what we're all witnessing here is the, is the respect and love of Charles Smith's teammates in his direction because of how he's playing tonight. I, I don't... Charles has had high-scoring games for the Knicks since he's been a Knicks, but he is playing bigger in this game than in any other game he's ever played for this team. He is playing big tonight. Two for four from the free throw line. He's really lifted the team. Smith hands them both. Knicks by nine with two to go. Coleman thinking three. Oakley's out there to greet him. He lets it go. It's an air ball, and the Knicks fans here at the Garden will remind him of it loudly. Derek 
is going his own way. And Chuck Daly is a little frustrated by that shot. This is what playoff pressure can do to a team as well. Individual habits break out under pressure. Derek Harper watched Greg Anthony lose that ball to Kenny Anderson. And a whistle on that fast approach up the floor. That ball just slipped out of Greg Anthony's hands. Foul was on Greg Anthony, his fourth. And Pat Riley got a little thinner after that. <laughs> And Kenny Anderson not having a memorable game one. The Nets have gone flat at the absolute worst time. They've missed their last seven shots. Now, what we'll read about tomorrow, I'm sure, is a comment by the coaching staff of the Knicks of how quickly. The Knicks reacted to Kenny Anderson, not allowing him to escape and to break through when the double team came up because the speed with which the Knicks have played him tonight is the difference. Anthony looking for a cutter. He's got Smith, who's got no hesitation. And great success. When Charles Smith starts getting friendly rolls at the Garden, you know things are changing for him. Ewing is down, a foul at the other end of the floor but Charles Smith has hit four shots in a row and he's got 17 points he's only missed two of nine shots he never thought about letting that 20 footer go he just did it Jason Williams back in replacing Benoit Benjamin if Charles couldn't resist the opportunity to take that shot now that's amazing. What a soft touch. That's not an accident. That's a good touch. That's a soft execution of the shot by Charles Smith. And now with 59.2 seconds to go, the Knicks had their biggest lead of the game. It was 10. And Kenny Anderson now makes it 8, 85, 77, inside of a minute. Post-game coverage includes Pat Riley's press conference, Chuck Daly's press conference, and more. And that'll be the way things go in the playoffs here on MSG. Ewan backing in on Jason Williams. He draws the foul. And they're starting to fall for him, too. What a difference when Patrick goes to the basket. Patrick, with a very deceptive move for Jason Williams, but it's his size advantage that he has on Jason. And when he rolls, he's so hard to contain for the defense when he rolls to the basket. The three-point play is completed. New Jersey's last nine points have all come from the free throw line. And, you know, you look ahead to game two and beyond, you know Kenny Anderson's not going to be three for 11 again. Or at least you wouldn't think so. And in spite of New Jersey's defensive success on Patrick Ewing, you doubt that he'll go 7-23 again. 20 seconds to go. They're standing at the Garden. The Knicks on their way to upholding the home court advantage that they worked so hard to keep. And the defense has done it out. 36% from the field for New Jersey. Greg Anthony hits a three. And it's going to be a final score that won't tell you how the game went. It'll just tell you how the Knicks dominated the final few moments. Derek Coleman responds with a three. 3.4 to go. And it's all over. A record setting low number of points in the first half. The offense came to live in the second, and what a night for Charles Smith. On a night where Patrick Ewing had little go his way, just about everything went his way as he scored 17 points. And the Knicks have taken game one of the Eastern Conference quarterfinals over the Nets by a final score of 91. 280. Mike Crispino will anchor our post-game coverage, so stay with us as we continue our coverage of the NBA playoffs on MSG.
The Knicks have taken game one of the best of five of the New Jersey Nets, 91 to 80. Patrick Ewing, some late offense, finishing with 25. Charles Smith, an outstanding effort with 17 points. And the Knicks have to be happy, maintaining the home court advantage tonight. Derek Harper had a good start to the second half. They had great defense from Anthony Mason, and certainly nobody is throwing in the towel in this one yet. In fact, Charles Oakley is going to take a few extras away from the officials on the way over to his postgame interviews with TNT. Benoit Benjamin, not a great night for him, but they will be back for game two in the best of five. Back here for the Knicks uh, postgame report as the Knicks have won it 91 to 80 after a record low scoring first half in which 68 points were scored. The Knicks come back in the second half with some great offensive creativity from Charles Smith. Excellent defense from Anthony Mason and Derek Coleman. The Nets went out without a field goal for almost nine minutes in the second half late in the fourth quarter. As a matter of fact, Derek Coleman having to leave with an injury, a split lip, four stitches, and when he returned, his team had a lead of two points. However, from there on, the Knicks turned it on, controlled the game, and win it 91-80. to Let's take a look at the leading scorers in tonight's game. Brought to you by your Tri-State Jeep and Eagle dealers. There's only one Jeep, and it's only at your Tri-State Jeep and Eagle dealers. We mentioned Patrick Ewing, 25 points. Not a good shooting night, but he kept at it. Scored from the free throw line as well. Derek Harper, a good start to the second half. Got the Knicks rolling. 14 for him. Hubert Davis had 11. Anthony Bonner, 7. Charles Oakley, 7. John Starks, first action in many, many weeks with a knee, had one basket. Derek Coleman with 27. 16 coming in the first half for him. He was shut down with just one field goal in the second half. Kevin Edwards, 15. Kenny Anderson, 3 of 11 shooting, just 13 points tonight. And Armand Gilliam with 12. We'll be back with more. Charles Smith wins the crowd back again tonight with this bucket and more. Back at the Garden in the aftermath of a 91-80 to victory by the New York Knicks, our Coca-Cola classic play comes to us from Charles Smith, who had six points in the first, 11 in the second, and always seemed to come up with key buckets when necessary. Here off a great offensive move, takes it to the hole and a reverse layup. Smith with a big bucket, and he is the player of the game tonight for the New York Knicks in game one. 17 points. Very economic shooting at 7 for 10. The Hilton player of the game, Charles Smith, who now joins us on the Knicks post-game report. And Charles, I had notes here in the first half. Every time the Knicks needed a key bucket, you seemed to make them then. And again in the second half when you had your chances, you seemed to make the right moves again. Well, you know, it's just a, a matter of getting the ball out on the floor where, you know, I'm comfortable. And, uh, you know, once that happens, depending on who's guarding me, I have an opportunity to do some things that, you know, I like to do. You did not do a lot of thinking out there, it didn't seem like tonight. You were very instinctive about your moves. Well, you know, I, I was out there. You know, I knew I was going to be out there. And, uh, you know, coach was able to get me in the flow early as far as calling some plays for me. And, you know, once you get a success in the shots, whether you make them or miss them, you have opportunity to, you know, exploit your defender and then feel free and do some things against them. Did you feel with Patrick having an off night shooting the ball that maybe the Knicks were going to need you to get to the hole a little bit more? Well, you know, Patrick might have been having a, a, a tough night, but it wasn't just me. Uh, it was going to take a team effort. We have so many scorers on our team. It's just that I ended up uh, with those opportunities, and I took advantage of them. Once again, we talk about offense following a playoff game, but defense really was one of the keys for your team. I thought Derek Coleman had an excellent first half. Second half, it was a team effort against him, led by Anthony Mason, then Charles Oakley, and anybody else who was in the vicinity. Yeah, well, we know that Derek. Everyone knows that Derek is a really great player. He's got a lot of talent he's got a lot of skills and a lot of tools it takes a collective effort to stop a player like that and that's what we try to do in the second half unlike Atlanta and Orlando you have held the home court advantage I would think that's ultra important for your team to come out now put this one right behind you and go after game two well this game is over with there's no doubt we we said it's over with and uh, we just get geared up for Sunday and uh Got to thank God that we got the victory. I played well, and we'll be out back out there Sunday. One of the nice developments about this game, I think, for you is a few folks have stayed around for the post-game interview to uh, give you a little encouragement. It hasn't been the best of years for you, injury-wise and other things. Uh, this has to be gratifying for you to have this kind of a, an effort tonight. It's very gratifying. Like I said, with, with the opportunity to exploit my offense and, and time on the floor, I, I, I can get out there and have some fun. You know, I don't have an opportunity to think you know it, it's tough getting sporadic uh, shots and you know everybody played well everybody uh, uh, went out there and got the job done it was a team effort collectively and I'm glad we got it done we'll take a look at the jump shot that you hit in the fourth quarter and on the way by the front row and everybody else on that side of the arena 
You said hello again to the Knicks fans, didn't you? <laughs> you weren't surprised, were you? No, it's just I was out there feeling it. It was it was fun tonight. I had a. Uh, Opportunity to have some fun. It, it was good, and uh, I think our, our team. We have to get focused now. Put this game aside and get ready for Sunday. How much of this performance had to do with the shaved head? Do you think? No, I had. <laughs> I don't think it had anything to do with that. Uh, but uh, it's just something I, I'm, I'm sporting for now, just to uh, be with my man Charles and Charles and Charles. I guess when Oakley makes a, a statement, guys have to follow him. He's kind of a tough guy, isn't he? Well, Oakley's a captain, and you know when you have a captain, you want to respect him. And, you know, if he asks us to do things, if it's not really out of your means <laughs> and uh, you think you can handle it, you just do it because he's a captain. All right, Charles, thanks for joining us. Congratulations. Good effort tonight. Charles Smith, the player of the game in the Knicks victory over the New Jersey Nets, 91-80. to 80. Guests on the Knicks postgame report receive the American Express gift check. Think of it as a universal certificate that can be used to buy anything just about anywhere. Gift checks are available where American Express traveler's checks are sold. Charles Smith inside, Charles Smith outside, powering the Knicks to a win in game one. We'll be back. Despite Patrick Ewing's off night for the Knicks, he shot just 7 of 23. The Knicks have held serve in game one against the New Jersey Nets, 91-80, doing it the classical way in playoff basketball with defense. The Knicks had an eight-point lead in the third quarter. The Nets erased all of that and led by four at 68-64. to But from there on, the Knicks were able to hold the Nets without a field goal till a final three-pointer by Derek Coleman in the final five seconds, which uh, finished off the score at 91-80. to So the Knicks defense doing what they had to do, slowing the Nets down, and and able to win game one here 91 to 80 after a very very low scoring first half the Knicks got great work from Derek Harper earlier in the second half Harper made a couple of key buckets he did not play much from there on Greg Anthony ended up finishing the game at point guard for Pat Riley he had contributions from everybody off the bench tonight John Starks getting to see his first action in a long long time after the knee surgery had one basket but also a key offensive foul draw in which he was hurt he hurt his back he had apparently bruised it. He did return, but did not return to the game, return to the Knicks bench. Let's go now to the MCS Cannon great teamwork moment brought to you by Cannon. Patrick Ewing with a block shot. Then the fast break outlet and a beauty by Charles Oakley to Anthony Bonner, one of the very few fast breaks in this half-court basketball game. A real grinded-out job here at Madison Square Garden. And that play brought to you by Canon Technology and MCS Service. One is a great reason to buy the other. We'll be back with more post-game activity after these messages on MSG. On the strength of a big fourth quarter in which the Knicks outshot the Nets and outscored them 28 to 19, the Knicks have won game one of their best of five in this first round game, first round series in the Eastern Conference. Kenny Anderson, one of the stories, and Derek Harper, too. Harper had 14 points. He was playing in his 48th playoff game. Kenny Anderson just 13 points tonight, 3 of 11 shooting. And Anderson was in the locker room after the game talking about that we're going to go to it in just a moment but the key I thought was Harper's defense on Kenny Anderson forcing some bad shots and some turnovers the Knicks 19 turnovers against the Nets turning that into 29 points let's go to the Kenny Anderson Patrick Ewing was tough on the block you know to defend and uh, I think down the end we just we just didn't play enough intensity on defense but that's something you know make no excuses they outplayed us when they had to and they beat us. You ready for what do you take out of this for game mm, two? Definitely got to look at the film and we'll, we'll go over it and, and make adjustments. What broke down during their run? You uh, 68, 64? Yeah, then I don't, they just, I'm not sure. I don't remember that, that, that outcome, but uh, they, uh, they, uh, I think that the, uh, the big guy on the block really hurt us down the set and when he had to. Uh, Patrick June, we was making, we was, you know, we had the X and, Greg Anthony hit a three. Um, you know they was hitting their perimeter jump shots. It's something you got to, something you got to do when they got a, a low post player like um, Patrick Ewing. Okay, they do anything special to you out there? Um, yeah, they paid a lot more attention to me. You know, I, it was it was, was kind of hard for me to, to get a good look at the basket. Uh, but hey, you know that's all in the game. I just try to make an adjustment for the next. One. What do you think you can do to? to get over what they're doing. They're obviously getting up on you quicker too than they were. Yeah, they're getting up quicker. They're getting back in transition. Hey, you know, they're making it tough, but hey, you know, we was right there. 
we could have broke broke through, but you know it's tough to win on that floor. But uh, we was in the game, we played them tough, and uh, hopefully we can learn from that and try to get one, try to get this game Sunday. You look at it like it's just the first round of a heavyweight fight. I mean, yeah, you yeah. If you, you, if you want to look at it like that, but uh, you know it's, it's not a long series, so you really don't have that much to to um to keep saying, okay, we got the next game, next game, we got to get on the next game, which is Sunday. We can't just say, hey, this is the first one. We got to learn from our mistakes. Kenny Anderson, four turnovers tonight, and he played the entire basketball game, 48 minutes. He has two days to rest. Game two is coming up on Sunday. So the Knicks have game one and a one nothing lead. Pat Riley had these comments after the game. And our best basketball from about 68 to 64 when we were down four, and uh, I, I just thought for the first game we were, we were very tentative, you know, as a team, uh, and uh, and I think for the most part, uh, you know, the things that we had to get done in the fourth quarter got done. Charles Smith, you know, really stepped up big time and uh, made some big, big shots for us when we were struggling, and uh, you know, it was just a good win for us. So. Uh, any questions? <laughs> I'll just project. I can. My voice is gone. Talk about what you did the last eight minutes of the game when they, because they got, went so long without field goal defense. You know, but both teams, you know, played the game. You know, very. It was a slow-paced game. You know, they're working the clock. Uh, we did not want to, you know, get into a situation. Uh, and one of the things that we found out from, you know, the. Uh, five games that we played against them. We were giving up about 10 possessions a half, you know, not getting anything very good. And, uh, and so we were committed tonight to try to execute as much as we could and get the ball to the players that we can get them to. And I think the last seven, eight minutes of the game, uh, from a defensive standpoint, uh, you know, we, uh, we limited them to one shot. And uh, that's when Charles and Patrick, uh, you know, made some very timely baskets for us. And, uh, you know, that's what we needed. We needed that at that particular time of the game. So, you know, it wasn't any miracle. It was just <coughs> players stepping up in situations and making jumpers and making tough drives and tough post-up plays. As Charles got rolling, did you get the all stuff for him or did he get live on his own? No, no, we, you know, we were calling two or three sets going down a stretch to try to get the ball to him, Patrick. And, uh, you know, both of them made some very strong moves. and. Uh, you know, Charles made a couple of jumpers and he made you know drive to the basket and uh, <coughs> we're both very similar in, in what we do. We don't we don't do there's not a lot of stuff that we're going to do in our offense that's going to try to trick anybody. We're going to take it to our strongest players we feel and and, and go from there. Kenny was uh, was contained I think for the most part. Uh, you know we spent a lot of time in Charleston. You know, working on their pick and rolls. Period. You know, we didn't talk too much about post ups or catch and shoot plays. We really worked hard and making sure our rotations were solid. And uh, you know, we did one little thing differently from a defensive standpoint on him. And uh, you know, I think they'll read it, they'll, they'll study it, and they'll try to make some adjustments themselves. But uh, uh, he was looking to move the ball. You know, I'm sure they had an attack against what we wanted to do defensively on pick and rolls, and, and he was not. You know, very aggressive from the standpoint of trying to take it like he had during the regular season. He was moving the basketball out of the traps. Was that one thing loading up to one side so they would have to reverse it a little wider? Well, no. You know, we know what they want to do, and uh, it's not the it's not the first pass that we had a hard time handling. It was the second pass, and uh, you know, we just were much more committed to rotating quicker and stronger and closing out on guys who were driving the ball to the basket. Pat, is that the Charles Smith you've been hoping? Well, you know, Charles can play the game of basketball. He, you know, he had a good week. His knee was sore in Charleston. He did not practice at all yesterday and, and rested. And today we did not shoot around at all. So, you know, he had a lot of energy and he just played very well for us. Made some big, big plays. Yes. You're almost happy for a guy like that, given the. Uh, it's only one game. Yeah, I'm happy for him tonight. Okay, you know, <laughs> I don't want him to live on this game for the rest of the playoffs. Okay, and I think he's, you know, he knows he can accomplish those things. And when he's playing freely and and sort of unencumbered, you know, by, you know, the weight of the world on his shoulders that, that he can perform. And, and, yes, for tonight, I was very happy for him. Can one game, can one game release that weight? Coach Pat Riley's press conference brought to you by the New York Times. So put this one behind them and get on to Sunday for Charles Smith. 7 of 10, 
27 minutes and 17 points, one of the key players for the Knicks tonight. Let's check in, check in on what's going on around the NBA. Bob Page standing by now at the sports desk. All right, Mike, here's what's happening at Chicago tonight. Cleveland led by two at halftime, but now Scottie Pippen going strong to the hole in the second half. The Bulls have gotten back at it, and in fact, they've opened up a significant lead. They're up by eight now. Back to you. When we return from Madison Square Garden with more on the postgame report, Chuck Daly, the Nets coach, discussing what's ahead for his team now that they trail one game to none. The Bud Dunk of the Game is brought to you by Budweiser. Fresh, pure, natural, proud to be your Bud. And the bud dunk of the game comes to us in the fourth quarter from Chris Morris off a miss by Jason Williams. This one rocked the garden in a negative way. Morris, two of his seven points on the night for the New Jersey Nets. But they lose 91 to 80. One of the keys turnovers, 19 for 29 points by the New Jersey Nets. The, uh, the Knicks took advantage. Now let's find out what Chuck Daly had to say. Well, I, I think this game will uh, serve as uh, somewhat of an education. Um, Probably in this building, they're the toughest defensive team left uh, playing in the NBA of all the teams in the um, uh, in the NBA playoffs. And uh, the biggest problem is working to uh, get open shots. It's very, very hard to get a good shot. Uh, we had some breakdowns defensively, and yet we hung in there. When Derek went out, uh, we regained the lead, <clears throat> but then. Uh, when he came back in, we couldn't hold on to it for whatever reason. But uh, their post-up play was very strong. Their defense was very strong. And they executed when they had to execute. And uh, the only other problem for us was free throw shooting. And it's periodically been a little bit of a problem during the uh, course of the year. Uh, they were 17 for 24. We were 23 for 32. I don't think in a game like this you can miss uh, that many nine free throws. Uh, and stay in the game on the other guy's home court. It becomes a, a serious factor. But um, they deserve to win. They played very hard. They played excellent. And uh, we were right there. It was a very entertaining game up until the last five minutes, and then it kind of got away from us. But uh, entertaining game. I thought our guys played hard. They played extremely hard. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens on Sunday. Chuck, what do you take away? 68-64, you had a lead, seven or eight minutes to go. You had a chance to really steal one. Is that a real negative when you think back on it or not? Well, we were in position. We missed a wide open shot in the corner, I believe, and uh, then we had a turnover and gave up an easy basket on the other end. Uh, those are the kinds of things you have to take advantage of. When you get a lead and the other guy's building that late in the game, you really got to execute and get what you want. But Derek could come back from the sutures on his lip and wasn't I don't think really into the game at that point, but we had them in the game. But uh, they, Ewing scored on the baseline, and we missed a couple wide open shots. At, at that time, the difference there was they made those wide open shots. We didn't. Um, will it mean anything down the road? I don't know. You know, we're uh, we got to go over and uh, take a look at the film, and then we'll go from there. Chuck, Kenny, Kenny didn't seem to have a, um, a Kenny Anderson type game. That's because of their defense. Uh, they played extremely well. I, I thought their individual defense, their help on them, uh, every facet of their defense was pointed at keeping him under control, and they did just that. In those cases, he's got to distribute. During the course of the year, uh, over 90 games, he'd get off, and a lot of those, he'd get an open shot. Now he's not getting the shot. We're breaking a guy open, and he's got to see the guy open a little bit quicker. So subtlety, but to come to it at this point is very difficult. But that's the ability of their defense. Chuck, in your preparations this week, did you think that Smith would be such a factor? I suspected he could be. Um, you know, wide open shots. He made a couple big shots. He posted up. When we go small with Morris, it's a problem uh, because of the matchup, and they took advantage of him. He's a very good post up player, and he had a very big game. Was this game as physical or more physical than you expected it to be? About what I expected it to be, and I thought the officials did a great job of controlling the game. Uh, it was a very physical game, which we expected. So how do you, how do you explain the first half? Defense or two teams that were a little tight? Five well, you've got two fouls teams that, called in this game. As Chuck Daly mentioned, it was about what he expected and about what you would expect in an NBA playoff game, especially in the opener. The Knicks winning at 91-80. to 80. One of the key players for them, Derek Harper, at 14 points, holding Kenny Anderson to 13. John Andres standing by with Derek now. 
Derek, what are your feelings after this very exciting game? Well, it was a good win for us. I, I don't think we uh, can afford to get too excited about it because there's a lot of basketball left to play. And, you know, I think the important thing for us is to uh, just relax and play basketball. I think it was obvious tonight that we were a little bit tight as a basketball team early in the game, and uh, it took a good defensive effort down the stretch for us to win. Did you reach down to your veteran years of play and hit those couple of jump shots? It really seemed to loosen up the team. Uh, not necessarily veteran years. I feel like if I get good looks, I can knock the shots down. Um, you know, I just felt like we were sort of walking in mud early in the, in the game. We just didn't play with the, the kind of energy we needed. And I just felt like I needed to try and make something happen, and it worked out well for us. What was the defensive game plan against Kenny Anderson and Coleman, and did it work? I don't know if it worked necessarily, but I think we were able to slow both those guys down. Derek had a big game, but you know, I think all in all, we, we, we forced him to, uh, to beat us. And you know, we, we did a good job against him. As far as Kenny is concerned, you got to... Um, yeah, you got to try and double team him in the pick and roll situations and uh, make him uh, give the ball up as much as you can. And I think individually you have to try and stay in front of him. What were your impressions of your teammate Charles Smith's game? Charles played extremely well. I was really happy for him. You know, he, he's been down of late and people have been down on him. So I think it was a, a real uplifting game for Charles Smith. Do you think the same style game will continue throughout the series? I think so. I expect it to get even more physical. I think they're going to come and you know, try and be more physical in, 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 in Sunday's game, and we have to match their intensity. We have to bring the same type of intensity that, that they bring, or more. Congratulations to you, Derek, on a great game. Thank you very much. Derek Harper with 14 points tonight. Patrick Ewing with 25, although he shot just 7 of 23. Game 2 now coming up on Sunday afternoon here from Madison Square Garden. The Knicks holding a one-game-to-none lead in the best of five. The Knicks win it tonight by a final of 91-80 to 80 here at the Garden. Big game from Charles Smith as well. 17 points as the Knicks hold Kenny Anderson down to 13 and win. Coming up on MSG, a special edition of Knicks game night before game three from the Meadowlands when the series moves there between the Knicks and the Nets on Wednesday. Coming up next on MSG, it's Yankee baseball. The Yankees have traveled now down the coast to Oakland. They'll take on the A's in just a couple of minutes. For our director, Bobby Lewis, our producer, Howie Singer, Al Troutwig, and John Andres, this is Mike Crispino. That's Charles Smith. He's the man tonight. And we'll see you again, everybody.